walk into the wall. Toss the dwarf. Boom. Boom. <laughs> All right. Fargus, it is your turn. You just heard uh, the wolf No good. Yeah. Heavily <laughs> damaged. Run away. Right. I'm just going to cast Sparky. Okay. Not very much variety here, but... Let's see here. That that's is... That's roll number 11. Yep, that's good enough. That hits. Sweet. The uh, clay golem is uh, falling apart before you folks. It is uh, nearly, nearly uh, destroyed. No, not that state, you fucking cunt. <laughs> Try that again. Round two. There we go. Leon, it's your turn. Chaos! No. No. Yeah. No chaos. <laughs> no chaos. Is damage? Two damage? Two damage. Taken. Thomas, it's your turn. All right, Thomas, it's time to shine. Good luck. Uh, hmm. I mean, I tried. No. But yeah, now on Hurum's turn, he would get the rally. All right. Yep. And that's a free action, or that's a free action. Yes. All right, so I can't act at the same time. Yeah. All right. If the uh, creature is on its last leg still. Magic missile. Hiram uh, gets to rally as a free action, and he's already yep. done so, getting That's his 90 already points. Done. All right. So now I can attack it as well. To my understanding, you can, yes. So so it can get, like, nine points of damage, and then I'll, then I'll stand up. That is enough to topple the creature. Oof. Sure. That's good. He should have, should have w wakes up from the like stun of having his head bashed in, and then, you know, well, narrowly dodging, but the force of the blow sort of knocked him, knocked him unconscious, and then grenade shock basically. She just looks up and then like reaches his hand out and a blast of of sort of uncontrolled energy really, uh, splash smashes into its its head, sort of melting it as he then rises slowly. Combat I is gotta, over. I have to. I have to spend things. Tempest would offer a hand to the dwarf in case he needs it. Sure, sure. As he stick so, generally, but that probably fell out of his hands. So I gotta do this before I do anything else. Yes. So oh, having that's one seen the golem and having seen the destroyed door, no train. Would, would Thomas, with his knowledge of carpentry, think that the wooden door was indeed opened by this golem? There is no need for a roll on that. Looks pretty. Looks pretty evident. Okay. Isn't that right, Train? He treated it like a train. He's a train. Yeah. <sighs> could seeing what those hands did to the ground by Thomas's feet, and then to Dwo hear him. I'm impressed. Dwarim didn't leave a crater where he hit the wall. That's pretty bad. <sighs> yes, combat so, is over. So, is there gonna be more of those things in here? Possibly. Oh, uh, hopefully not as disobedient. Can I do a knowledge check on the golem to see if this is a common thing? <laughs> he knows archmages. He studied with them. He also has studied the construction of items. I would classify the golem as a constructible item. <laughs> sure, you can do that. Well, you to talk. Uh, you really you know, study the body. Case here. <laughs> having his time that he spent understanding golems. Let's All right, see a, that would be an intelligence-based skill check. Alright, 1d20 plus 2 plus 5 plus. And I am an Intel 2, I think. Yes. No, you're an intelligence. Uh. Uh, well, Tempest, the only thing that he can really come up with is that clay golems have been known to be used by any of the icons. Well, you know. Leon, Leon's been around and also, you know, he studied on he studied under wizards as a lot. You know, he he did so he did some very interesting um work, including probably some with golems at some point. Maybe he knows something. Alright. <laughs> Clay golems are known to be used by any of the icons. The Archmage does like them for uh, guarding sites as uh basically like loyal constructs. Although uh they, loyal have, my ass. they have been known to uh go berserk. Which uh, was clearly the evidence here. And it seems that uh, looking at one of the corpses of one of the presumably wizards that have been slain, cause of death, golem. The uh, the sign over there that says basilisk lair, cause of opening, golem. Huh. Well, that, that's problem solved. 
Well, time to search the room for anything that might be useful or valuable in some yes. way. You are so uh, cute. You folks are actually able to uh, comb through the entire tower. There's uh, no other combat here. Any of the other creatures have been left inanimate, or uh, in the case of like a few remaining and barely functional constructs, just uh, far smaller creatures, uh, Dvohirim is able to assert himself, and they are not hostile. You find the Basilisk Room with very clear and specific instructions to only allow the constructs to feed the Basilisk. It must never leave this tower, for the tower is what keeps its power in check. So and, someone, so there's Golem to obey their signs. Uh, <laughs> you know, in, in like some notes and details, like basically like study, uh, and I'll give you some information. Uh, a black Basilisk is a giant crested serpent with eight legs. Um, it is a horrid serpentine creature which kills everything around it. Black basilisks are the most common and uh, they exert their dominance by petrifying everything around them. And uh, it's also noted to keep the food and supplies in special jars. On the off chance the basilisk does get free. Do we see any petrified wizards? No. The wizards themselves have not been petrified. The people here have been killed by the by the maddened clay golem. A quick check in your backpacks, however, will confirm that your food has rotted and water. All been uh spoiled, made stagnant you presume, by the poison terrain. Sure. I, uh, I suppose also we can find the larder of this tower then. Yeah, it's tempest it's, find it's, any jars. It, it unfortunately has food. been cracked and stomped all over by the clay golem. God damn it. You uh, do find uh, ritual components for two rituals, and these components are special because they provide a plus two bonus to the ritual. Could be good to keep in mind. So who does ritual casting? I do, you do. Do you want one? I want one? Sure, we can each have a ritual component. <laughs> so, yeah. Sure. You also end up finding a few other items of interest. Ones which are magical. There is a belt. The belt of giant health. Like most belts, this increases your maximum recoveries by one. In addition, one bonus recovery given by this particular belt is giant-sized. You get to roll d12s instead of your normal recovery dice when you spend it. You choose when to tap when you tap this extra-large recovery. Uh, and whoever ends up wearing that, I will give you the quirk for that. Hmm. There's also the... Uh, let me go ahead and copy this text in from my notes. The Cloak of Invisibility. It's a standard action to use, and it has a recharge of 16+. plus. You become invisible. As you've got to hold the cloak around you to maintain the invisibility, you can't take standard actions while invisible, which means mostly no spellcasting or attacking. You can drop the invisibility at the end of any turn. You become visible immediately and can act normally on your next turn. And if you're using that outside of combat, the invisibility duration would be around 5 minutes. Finally, there is the Ring of Protection at Recharge 11+. You gain a plus 2 bonus to your armor class until the start of your next turn. Now, keep in mind that using that Ring of Protection as most magic items is a free action, which means you can do that as if it were shield, basically. So if you're, uh, if you're worried that you're about to be fucking hit by an attack, you can use that as a free action. And, uh, you know... Uh, when can you... Can you, like, shield use it in response to an attack? No. So, okay. th th not like the shield spell itself. So, if you think that you're about to, like, be fucking smacked, be like, oh, uh... Well, let's see here. Let me take a look at the shield wording specifically. Uh, uh, That's a nice item. Let's see. Free action to cast? I'll actually allow you to use that in response to an attack hitting you, so that you can make it miss instead. Yes. 
Three magic items. They are all adventurer tier, meaning they will take up one chakra. Uh, and whoever accepts the item and uh, accepts it into their hearts and lives, I will give you the cork for the item. So right. who gets what? Yes. Okay, first off, Sheep has how, one magic item already. Does he already have... Like, how much chakra do we have at level? You one have level. two. You have two. two. One per level. All These right. are all adventure tier items, so they consume one each. Now, uh... I like the ring of protection, but I don't. I, I'm not gonna be purposefully on the front line because oh. uh, I don't want to. So that would be kind of like a, in the case bad things happen, which might not see the most use, right? I mean, I think we should go for. I mean, using these items for if bad things happen seemed a bit little sort of like if bad things happen, they happen, and I don't think plus two AC is gonna save me from that. No. Uh, I'd be much more interested in the cloak because that's uh, oh no I'm being murdered like I'm invisible now leave yeah <laughs> because yeah, my easy's gonna I suck think it would be good if you had the cloak actually yeah I, that's that's uh, I mean the build is also nice but again I think the cloak is more and, and of course and of course it matches the cloak in your picture right that's clear your yeah. invisibility cloak so someone <laughs> engages with me and I can pull my cloak up and leave. Yeah. right you just pull up your hood like nope and there's of course um, a recharge that's pretty high but. It's I'm not probably that not going to need it. Yeah, I'm probably not going to need it. I'm probably not going to need it too much. Hopefully, so. Well, you uh, think that recharge is high? I have 16 plus recharges to do. I can I can use it, and then I can then I can leave, and then the next battle I might have it again. Yeah. The belt, I think, should go to someone who has D6 as for recovery dice to make I have, the most use. I have D6s it. intend to be quite close to the front lines. I'm not. Yeah, I I also think that you might be the best candidate for that one. Seems likely. Ooh, I get a belt. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say, despite already having an item, I really wouldn't mind the ring. Of course you wouldn't. It's you or Tempest, I think. Uh, yeah. I mean, Tempest doesn't have a magic item. Yeah, I think That's Tempest true. should have it. And you have more passive AC than him. That's true. Yeah. I mean, we need you two to tank. So. Yeah. So you both Tem have to be equally Tempest good at tanking. Gets the ring, and and, I and get Leon, up. Leon, <laughs> uh, since you now have an easier time healing, maybe you'll you know, step in front of us... Uh, Time. You know, I yeah, might the, be slightly ring, more willing. The ring on Tempest might definitely be the best choice because he can use it to save his momentum occasionally. Yeah, yeah. And that also helps yeah. him a lot. Because his momentum just makes him crazy. Yeah. So everyone but me has some magic item. You'll get one. When we yeah, kill the Archdruid, I'm sure he'll fine. have like, lots of items. <laughs> <laughs> he'll have like an epic tier one, the problem is, and then he won't be able to use it. The, the, the staff of the, of the evil druid asshole. Who you can you use do, it you to do kill realize staff can be, as a free action. You do know staffs give a bonus to all spells, right? Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, my spells... Um, uh, uh, let's see. They count as uh, divine spells. Yeah. For uh, that and purpose. If I, if I had a, if I had like an arcane staff of damage and attack plus four, I'd be so happy. <laughs> attack plus four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I need to, I need to ask him. If I don't even like... know what kind of bonuses they can give, though. But uh, mm. you know. I also uh, the Earth Strength will get a plus five when I get the second uh, ability point instead of four, because it's <laughs> my uh, dexterity modifier. Uh, Phil, you have a ring. Now I'll have a cloak of invisibility that can save my ass when I need it. <laughs> what, is it going to be like a cloak of invisibility, but the quirk is going to be like, whenever you talk, you must shout? Yeah. I don't really feel <laughs> like I need you, any You make item super tons of noise, because it's very, you want to show how invisible it is. Terrible. I'm just saying, like, you know, while you guys are we're talking about what items, you'll be studying the constructs, looking for corruption. I can't yeah. be doing, put this ring on and respect it. Actually, actually, uh, you know, Except to your, your your would make sure to uh, to tell all of you that uh, these things uh, should be respected. They are individuals by themselves, and if you if you, I mean, they are really. Uh, you can say that his people would look down upon him quite a bit for allowing these to go into 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 the hands of non dwarves, as uh, as the dwarf king is said to be the uh, the owner of all of them. However, they are gener generously. Loaned out by him to to all of us. In this well, case. He owns them. That sounds like a plot for Tempest. Mm. Yeah. Tempest can't Tempest help. Us. Tempest, so can't Tempest help take, take this as a sign of them. good faith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, don't don't know the dwarf king. Them. Don't 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 tell him that. If you ever meet him in person. <laughs> <laughs> Me him in person. I'm dead. <laughs> oh. oh, why is that? Long uh, stories. <laughs> do, do tell. 
Uh, well, it's more of a case of the you know. He, he, Actually, it's... let's let's get this uh, this node fixed first, shall we? Yeah. You you already know that he has a negative relationship with them because they want to dismantle him to figure out what makes him tick because he's not dwarf made. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he might be. Just no one remembers how. Now, he's an artifact of a long bygone era. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hell, it could be he's the first Forgeborn. Mm. An, an, artif- an artifact that conveniently fits in, the, fits in one of my pouches perfectly. Mm. Yeah, you made the spot for me. So nice. It's like, like a what, kangaroo. It's, it's, like one of the, it's like one of the pouches on my sack just happens to be perfectly fitted. Was, was that a part of the narration from Grimmish? It's a perfect fit! It is, impo- it is an important thing to remember. You will not fall out. Also, we are going after the Basilisk, right? Uh, no. What? Are you ridiculous? That thing can turn us to stone. You don't see oh, all the it, people out there? It could turn the entire town of Fockhaven to stone. It, would it, uh, it ran Haven? into the Wildwood. The into Druids the Wildwood. Deal with it. Mm. Oh, we don't want to go in there. Yeah, the druids, the druids hate the basilisks. Oh, aren't you been talking about the basilisks like, the entire time? They can have each other, really. Stone. <laughs> so I think in response, no. We don't want to no. go in there. Unfortunately, we do have the ley lines of all magic breaking apart here, which is... Yes, we should minor. kind of uh, get on that, Leon. Do you have uh, any experience with this sort of thing? Uh, I have minor exper- experience in it. I have not personally tried re-establishing a ward, but I know of the wards quite well. I've done, I've done, uh, I've done a bit of, uh, of such things myself in my time. So I'll, uh, you can follow my lead if need be. I'm experienced in the channeling of magic, so we'll see what we can do here. Yeah. Oh, it's going back. Oh God! So, oh God, that has returned. Um, the magic yes. item divvying, the cloak, the, the cloak of invisibility has gone to Manakai. All right. The ring has gone to Tempest. All right. I have got the belt. Uh, also, do I get the recovery now as a bonus one? So I got from three to four. Yes. So you would okay. have four out of nine. Okay. So a question then: If I use, if I like get engaged by someone and I pull the cloak over me, will I still be engaged even though I'm invisible? Yes. What does invisible do? Uh, invisibility. If anyone were to attempt to attack you, they would have a fifty percent mischance. All right. It sure. would, uh, it would, it would basically be total concealment, as it's described in the book, like how you're familiar with in D and D. All right, yeah, I don't live with that. Yes. Uh, you also end up finding the uh, basically like the room which uh, oversees like the uh, the health of the tower and like the yeah. rest of the tower itself. It is, it's pretty fucked. You know, I've repaired a few of pretty fucked things for yes. my time. I will uh, go ahead and describe this. The uh, the DC for that you will have to meet on a skill check will be a hard champion tier 1, DC 25. For anything Ouch. that you would like to attempt to argue or discuss in how you attempt to fix this situation. Failure means that you will still like probably like render the node inert. Which is what success is basically doing, too. You're trying to stop this. Like, uh, this can be fixed later, but you don't want the magic to leak out from the ley line. But, uh, that's a, that's a bit beyond. That would be a DC 30. Uh, DC 25 stops the node, and if you fail that, you would still render it inert, but there'd probably be some blowback. And you're not exactly sure what that would be, but there would be consequences. Ideas like there would be a, perhaps a final burst of energy, you might get hurt, it might attract attention, some spirits could come out. I want to cash in on that five from the Dwarf King. Alright. I want to, because I'm, I'm using my time to actually look at the constructed golems. Okay. And I want to find one that is actually useful more as an apprentice for the magic ley lines. Okay. One that's used... Uh, this is me trying to stretch it. I'm not too sure what the five is, but in an attempt to look through the golems to find one that was used specifically as a wizard's aid, you know, similar to what Eager was for Dr. Frankenstein, something that helped provide materials for rituals, helped practice the more 
baseline to help improve accuracy for things, to help be a catalyst. All That's right. what he's spending the time looking through the golems for. I will say that you are able to find one who is able to assist Dwohirim, or any caster who wishes to attempt this. Uh, and uh, the uh, little apprentice there will give you a plus five to your d20 roll. Okay. Yeah, unless the ley lines are made out of wood, Thomas can't really assist you. Is, is it possible for two spellcasters to work together? Uh... Aiding each other? Perhaps, if you could devise some sort of ritual or way to explain how you folks, with your differing uh, ways of using magic, are able to work together. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, this this whole node is probably mostly just sort of metaphysically magical in nature. But that's what we're trying to sort of control, almost like a storm that's just welling out of a... It's basically a leak in a ship, right? And we're trying to basically set up a pump to keep pumping the thing, the water back out. Yes. Um, but before we get to that point, you heard, you know, like, he has he's been doing this. He's been a shaper for quite some time, and uh, he's been a pretty damn good one at that. So uh, perhaps he could make this whole task easier if he started by basically physically removing some of the damage that's been done to this whole area. Uh, perhaps by making a, a one of the a ritual of mending. He could attempt to repair some of the physical damage that has been done to the area. Maybe even retain some of its original function in in warding or, or in, in somehow controlling this wild chaotic energy, which would make the, the task of actually controlling it easier. All right. I like that. Uh, we'll we'll uh, have you do a mending ritual. Do you wish to use uh, your material components that you've uh, got? Oh, yeah. For? Okay. Uh, this will end up taking you just four minutes to uh, use. Uh, you'll get a plus to this, so this will be a DC 20. Uh, as you right. attempt to uh, perform as you describe, it will be your intelligence plus your magical background plus your level. All right, so there's four intelligence, five magical background, two for level, and two for uh, my components to see if I can repair some of the tower. Okay. Ooh. That does manage to pass. Uh, the uh, maelstrom, which surrounds the tower, does calm slightly. The uh, What you would need to make now in order to render this magical node inert is now a DC-20, or to reactivate it would be a DC-25. Shutting it down is a DC-20, and uh, making it fully functional again is a DC-25. All right, you have a plus five. want to make it... Yeah. My my idea I have here, um, you know, DM, you can listen to this and tell me what you think. Uh, basically, doing a shield ritual to try and using the shield, you know, helping form the shield to try and help contain the power, and then try and shape it back into a state that would be in such in such a way that it would be able to be either refunction or at least just contain it and shut it down. All right, you recharge your shield spell. Yeah, my I recharge successfully. All right. Uh, I I would allow that as an acceptable way of you attempting that uh, the skill check in order to uh, I suppose you would be attempting to either uh, render it inert or to make it fully functional again. Mm -hmm. Would would could we go for the functional and then if we get like below twenty, um, if you get it, then just become inert. Or would it be like an all or nothing? It would be an all or nothing type thing. Like, the steps that you would make to try and fix it and make it fully functional would be different than the steps that you'd take to just shut this node down. You um, need to make it functional. For your, for your knowledge, uh, as I wrote before, adding up all the bonuses so far, that is the bonus I have. All right, okay. so where did they come from? I have five from uh, Magical Background, two from yeah. Level, four from Charisma, yes, two from Ritual Components, and then, Grimmer said, the, like, Robot Helper from Tempest. Yes. We five plus five. All right, then I, I suggest that you attempt to reactivate the node, and we, we pray to the god that is not a foolish thing to do. Yeah, go for that's, it. That's my suggestion. That's at least what Juhurim would suggest. He does not think that leaving this node unoperational is in any way a good idea. Well, this should be fun. Besides reactivating, it might actually help some of the damage that's been caused outside. Possibly. Yes. Anyone else who can do something to make this easier or better? I, uh, I've already tried. There's still like a good like fifty percent chance, but 
it's, well, I guess that's no knowledge of this. It's 25, so I need a 7 or more. Yes, yeah. you would need a 7 or higher. On 7 or higher. Well, let's find out how long it takes then. Should be interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, say, we'll say that this actually, like, doing this of this magnitude would be an hours type thing. You're going to be here the rest of the night. D4 hours or just a hour? It, roll, roll 1d4. One hour. Uh, at that point, it is still dark outside. Your will keep repairing things around the tower. All right. One hour. Anything and, might help. And then you can make your skill check. Mm-hmm. All right. There you damn well go. <laughs> with, oh, oh. With, with the combined efforts of the ritual components, plus what Tempest had discovered, plus... Dwohirum's attempt to reconstruct the tower, the uh, the node shudders, but under Leon's expert handling, comes back to life. And you sense that wards which had been weakened or had completely <coughs> been deactivated in this particular section have equally come back to life. Leon, who was basically sitting, kraut, sitting basically legs crossed on on the floor with candles basically surrounding him as he, you, as he basically revised through through and just grabbed hold of the pure ma magic and tried to reshaping it. After an hour of just being there, opens his eyes and lo looks looks around with a with a pleased smile at the fact that no one's exploded. The chaotic maelstrom surrounding the tower has stopped. Jerome is so glad that that didn't fail, and like it got infused with necrotic energy, and like oh, look, looks a terrible. Looks over to a dwarf. Well, not slowly. Good work. It's, 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 it's the first. It's the first time I've tr I've tried shaping my magic in such a way. I actually got the idea from you back in the forest, if you remember, when you when you when you used your magic on that tree. And you didn't even set anything on fire. Impressive. Fire is a side effect of combat, not of meditation. We should seal the doors. It'll take me a little bit, but I should be able to do it. At least, I mean, remove the stairs or something. Yes. You so that no that. one can come and mess with it. Or destroy it again. Not without a bit of trouble. Leon nods as he rises from a position and begins gathering back his, gathering back his candles. And the rest of the night is yours to rest here in the tower, unless you wish to brave uh, the Seems outside like world at night. To rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. we're rest it, it does not. It does everything. not count as poison terrain. Pretty good thing. Pretty All good right. place to rest. The uh, yep. the night does manage to pass uneventfully and rather quietly. Uh, isolated you are in the tower, especially now that it has been uh, repaired and the chaotic maelstrom has subsided. Turning this back into an adventure tier environment. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, morning will arrive, and the uh, sunlight will stream through the windows, and you can see, looking outside, the blasted, poisonous terrain, the path that it was carved uh, through the grass and fields to Meadowdell, and then jutted off into the wild wood. I suppose we should inspect the village and see if there's anything there we could do. I don't I think you were any about, point. about to say take. I don't think there's really much point to doing that. I think we should get back as soon as possible. Taking a few hours of our travel time won't do a whole lot of difference. I'm not talking days here. But there might be something or. Well, we owe it to the chance that someone survived. I guess so. Hiding and somewhere in a closet. And you should at least give it a try to see if you can use your magic to help these people. 